Zita sent us this beautiful image to use and I decided to do a little bit of tweaking to it with Photoshop for one to get it so that it was the same proportions as my panel a 12 by 16 and to play with the the colors and contrasts a little bit. I really wanted to isolate the light from the sky into more of a central area rather than having all of the light be the same throughout the sky and the water I wanted to isolate that light a bit and play with the, the coloration some. So that's what I've done here. Okay, so notice that I take my brush and really splay it out here. I've got a big brush. This is a size 12, the Rosemary Ultimate Long Flat. And when I'm getting this down on here, it's big, big strokes, not little, not noodling it, just really big strokes. And I will often leave you notice, even up here in the sky, I'm going different directions with my stroke because I'll often leave that. It stays. I don't necessarily cover all of that up. And I want to have that kind of texture in my paint. I want to have those brush strokes. I want the, the movement, even of the brush strokes in different directions, to add to the feeling that it's a painting. It gives it a lot more interest when I do that.
So if I start putting the edge in like that right off the bat with that broken edge quality, then I can sharpen it up later in spots that I want it sharp. But with all that moss on there, I want it to be a fairly soft edge. So taking the uh, brush where the bristles are fairly broken up like that and splayed apart, I can create that kind of a soft edge by coming from the side. I'm using, I'm letting the texture of the bristles, it's, it's a very light pressure so that I'm getting a broken brush stroke back there. I don't want it to be a solid color that I'm putting down. That's why I laid in all of these darker middle value tones in here so that I could come on with the lighter one, lighter colors and let a lot of that darker middle value bleed through.
So, I realized that I put in all these little branches and things before I had even carried this mountain range across the painting. Not very brilliant by that. <laughs> That's par for the course. So I'm going to go in and add all that in between here now. Definitely doable, just a lot more work. And at this point, I'll probably use smaller brushes in these areas. Not because I'm worried about the details here, so much as I'm wanting to get texture into these areas with the little branches and the hills back behind and the way the light is working in there. There's a lot of small value shifts in all these hills back here. And so that's what I'm going to be working on to get that value shift kind of texture in the painting. So I'll experiment. If I need to, I'll just come back in and go over the top of all of this and start it over again. We'll see how that goes. All right, so there's a good base for some of the colors I'll be using. And then I can modify each of those a little bit as I go. Now, if I leave little areas of light shining through, I'm not going to worry about that too much. So like where there are little breaks in here where I don't have color coming through at the moment. Because those can become little bright branches and leaves and other things that are shining through. So I won't know for sure how it comes out until I'm... Oh, I'm getting a lot of that covered up, aren't, aren't I? I won't really know what I think of all of that until I start adding in greater amounts of finish work to it. So I'm just playing with branches on this just to kind of balance out the strong shapes I have here that are both basically leaning to the right. I want to pull a little bit of the energy back in to the painting that direction. And I don't want to add a big tree in that's doing that because it, it will pull from these. probably get a little bit of energy going here as well just by bringing in some darker some greater contrast into that tree
and I'm I'm using a bit of a scraggly brush I don't know if you can see the bristles on there because I don't want real sharp edged reflections in here I want the water to be disrupted with even ripples in the water with all the edges. I want all the edges to be kind of broken up and disrupted a bit when it comes to all these reflections. So using a little bit of a ruffled brush helps with that. And it can also get problematic because it is a little bit of a mess. But pretty easy to come in and clean up anything that we might consider a problem with oil paint. So you can see how quickly it can start to get the filling of water. We don't have to be very detailed or careful in the very beginning. So we can bring all that in later. One thing I wanted to point out is this. There's a real tendency to think, okay, my mountains are curving this way. I'm going to curve this light right around with them. It doesn't work that way. This light goes in a straight line. The, the clouds come down and the light of it is coming in a straight line and it goes and loses itself back behind the mountains. So the same thing happens here. Oops. Happens here with the light here. It's going to end here as the mountain reflection comes and overshadows it. So it's those, those sorts of relationships are important to remember and keep in our minds as we, as we build up our paintings. Now another thing though is I have it a bit higher here than what, than what I have down in here so I can go and pull that down even farther which is nice. I like having that light in there. Unfortunately, I still have some of my light color here, so I think I will, especially since I have it so close to the, the base of this, I want to kind of, I don't want it to be in a tangent right across the bottom of that tree area there, if I can help it. 
So, and even just filtering it down into some of this area a little bit more, softening the transition some, would be kind of fun. Remember, we want to pull it right off the edge as if there's there's more this bush continues over here we've got more bush over here we're continuing it off the edge um, right over the the right side of it and that's the same with all of it we don't want it to feel like suddenly we the tree just stopped growing and there's it ends kind of right here a lot of us in the beginning we start to get timid and when we get to the edges for some reason and we need to push that right off the edges of our painting. And I don't necessarily want to have as much going on in this corner as what we have over on that side because this right here is pushing the viewer, compelling the viewer to go into the rest of the painting. Whereas this over here, I don't want them stuck down in this corner. So I get enough interest there to make it interesting, <laughs> make it so that there's something to look at, but not so much that the viewer feels compelled to stay. Just enough to keep them wanting more. And the more is right out here, moving around the painting.
I was so fixated earlier on breaking this up with more either dark green or light green leaves that I failed to think of one of the more obvious answers that was to come in with water and make holes through there that we can see the water with. So that is working out much better to break that up. This, I just noticed, this right here feels like it's right there on the water instead of separate from the water. So I need to bring that away from the water a bit. There, that's better. All right, so I keep looking around all the time to make sure I don't have well, like this and this parallel lines, uh, patterns where I have a one, two, three, four in a row sort of thing. And I don't see any at the moment. I mean, little bits here and there, just like that, but that doesn't bother me so much. So right now, I, I feel like I have a good mix going on, a nice variety of shapes and spaces <clears throat> and values, so it's leading uh, around and throughout it. And it's not, it, it's not feeling like it's overly thick anywhere or I feel like the spaces have been broken up sufficiently to work. So I get a little bit wild with my strokes for a bit, just let my intuition, my instincts kind of take over for a bit, and then I have to stop and make sure I don't get carried away and lose some shape that I wanted there all along. So that's when I, I, I do that for a bit, step back, and then evaluate where I'm at, then go again, back and forth and back and forth.
I won't know without actually being there what's causing this to be so bright. It might be the water that's reflecting off the water hitting that. It might be the light as it filters down through everything because there's not a definite strong light source it looks because we have light hitting on both sides of each of these trees. It looks like the light is coming from the right but we have a lot of reflected light on both sides of the trees so from a photograph that makes it a bit complicated. I really need to be there to know for sure. Those are some of the, those are just little, little, little things, little tiny things, nuances, but they can make a big difference. And for me, I don't like to have anything that, like that, where it's, okay, I like ambiguity in a lot of places within a painting, but not in a space like that where someone's having trouble telling where the tree starts and the reflected, reflection of the tree begins, or where the tree ends, I guess. So I still want to have the feeling of solid edges on my main tree on the solid part of the tree as opposed to the reflections but there's still a lot of room for breaking up those edges for making softening an edge at least so it pushes back where it should be Hopefully I've toned this down enough. We still have that motion and movement in the water. It's almost, the, the motion in the water for me 
gives it a little bit more of a painterly feel and a lot more interest in here with all the different colors swirling together and it kind of gives a a nice active backdrop for these stoic trees that are so powerful and dominant in there because even with all the activity in the trees the trunks are overall pretty quiet and stable so this I think gives a nice contrast or counter to all that stability in the tr in those tree trunks foliage down in here to mix that up a bit. Oh, that wasn't the right spot. This is going to be down here somewhere. I was thinking I was cutting it off up here. So if I'm confused that way, thinking that it's up here, then the viewer probably is going to think that too. Hmm. It does kind of stand out too much, doesn't it? Well, I am just going on and on here. How about if we Reduce it down even more and end it at about there. Hopefully that shows that, I don't know if our work is ever done. Sometimes we just get them to a point where we don't really know what else to do with it and hope that that works. Like back here, these are, I've made all the other reflections. Oh boy, lighter than their trunk. Yet these were still fairly dark compared to the 
trunk, so it looked just like the trunk, but that's because I was, at that time, going off of the photograph more than my own thinking. That's exactly what going to the back is all about, getting away from it and looking at the overall shapes and spaces in there, the values, all of that to make sure things are working right. These are still bothering me. These two right here, this light and this light, when I get back, when I look in the mirror or get back in the studio, they look like, and squinting, they look like one light line going that way and one light one, too wide and too parallel. So I've got to change up that. And it's, it's such an odd phenomenon. I don't see it when I'm looking straight at it here at the easel, but I see it in my mirror, and I see it when I get back in the room. Boy, sure I'm glad I have a mirror behind me. What a difference. I think that's one of the first times that I've, I mean, I use the mirror all the time to get a different perspective and see what's what I've been missing but that's the first time that I can remember where I would look here and see something completely different in the mirror and look over here and I'd be able to see it still usually if I look in the mirror and I see it I think oh okay and then I look back at the painting and there it is and then it's obvious but not this time I could not see that just looking at it well there we go <laughs> we'll see if that works I hope so. I'm not entirely sure about this area, but I think it might work. I'll have to think on it for a spell. Okay, it took me about 10 seconds when I stepped back to think this all here just, it's too much. Something about it is not carrying well from a distance. And I think it's because it was leading, it, having the two light lines thickened it enough from a distance into a white area, a really light area, and then it led down to this one, and it just made a line going right down this direction here. So that was part of the problem. And actually, I might need to just tone that down too. Okay, looking in my mirror, that looks much better. So I will leave it at that for the moment. All right, I hope that's it. I think we might have it by George. So all of you, good luck. <laughs> I, hope, I hope you can see all those little things much faster and better than I did here today. Have a lot of fun, I sure did. It, I know it, it seemed frustrating, but it, it was just fun. I mean, that's all what it's all about, that problem solving, the challenges figuring out what it is that's causing those those moments when it just doesn't seem to be working right. Something's not working right. So I, I think that's good right now. I'm going to leave it for a bit. All right, well, thank you, Azita, for sharing your photo with us. That was a fun painting to do. So have a great time painting your own moss-covered trees and water mountainscape reflection painting. How's that for a title? All right, <laughs> happy painting and have fun creating your own masterpiece. Thanks for stopping by. Those cypress trees were a lot of fun. I've never actually painted moss on trees before, or cypress trees for that matter, but it was challenging and that's what art's all about, to challenge the old noggin once in a while. And that was a challenge. So I hope all of you are having similar experiences. I wanted to thank Azita, one of our monthly members, for sending us that photo to paint from. And if for any of you who are up in British Columbia, 
then go out and find your own cypress trees. I don't have any right here around us in Indiana. This is actually a piece that I painted on location here in the area, and that's more of what we'd find around Indiana. Whatever it is that you have in your area around the world, I hope that you have a great time painting it. And, happy painting!